right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday night evening service. So with your uh, red hymn books, please stand, if you would, please, and turn over to 633. Hold the fort. That is the song. It didn't say stop what you're doing. <laughs> 633, hold the fort. My comrades, see the signal waving in the sky. Reinforcements now appearing, victory is nigh. Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus signals new. for prayer. Brother Travis, if you would please. Good evening, family. Good Let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for another wonderful evening. You brought us here together in your house, Lord, to, to worship you and learn from your word, Lord, and I pray that you'll be here with us tonight. Um, bless the preacher as he brings the word, Lord. Uh, provide him a hedge of protection and keep him strong as he stands up here in the pulpit and teaches us what it is that we need to learn, Lord. And we pray all these things in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good evening. Welcome to West Coast Baptist Church. As you can see, Pastor is not in the pulpit. He is uh, down feeling sick. Um, and Pastor Lotow is sick as well, so keep them in your prayers uh, that they could get over it, get strengthened. Um, we just came out of our missions conference, and uh, so it was a busy uh, week, and then uh, a couple of uh, folks are, have gotten sick. So keep them in your prayers. I believe we have some visitors to introduce. have any announcements that I may not be aware of. Brother Mike is going to come and stand in the gap for us tonight, and uh, he's going to preach for us tonight, so we'll be looking forward to that afterwards. Um, I do want to remind you, uh, we did just finish our missions conference, and uh, so I know the pastor uh, would like to remind us all to make sure if you have your uh, faith promise card to make sure you get that turned in. 
um, that helps uh, the um, calculation of um, you know kind of that way we can convey accurately what we're looking at for the next year as far as the mission conference and then eventually uh, the missions budget will be uh, published and put out to the church um, but uh, the numbers looked uh, very promising and the uh, pastor was encouraged by it so um, if you have those still out let's get them in and then uh, we can wrap that up all right and then we'll prayer requests prayer requests any uh I was going to say save rounds, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything to uh, a lot of people. So, Mrs. Dobbins. Okay. What was your sister's name again? Angie. Okay, so Mrs. Dobbins' sister, Angie, will be praying for her. They're going to be running some tests on her because uh, apparently had a condition with an enlarged heart. Anybody else? Mrs. Burton? be praying for Pastor Burden. So uh, he has had surgery on his back, so that is a sensitive issue. So, all righty. Anybody else? Anybody in the choir? Band. Or band? Band. All right. I will turn it back over to Mike. <clears throat> on the clarify, it's that Brother Mike feeling going to preach, not this one. <laughs> just pick like 10 songs that look really scriptural and just sing my sermon <laughs> and then you'll all run out of here all right back to business this is from uh, brother thongdy and um, it reads here dear pastor and friends greetings from southern california as i write this letter laos remains to be closed due to the pandemic it makes one wonder how long they can hold off foreigners from entering their borders if laos will continue to remain closed we are praying about transitioning into working to reach the Lao people living in Thailand. There are currently 18 million Lao people in the country of Thailand. I will make another attempt to enter in Laos, into Laos through Thailand in April. I am scheduled to fly into Thailand on April 7th. We typically host a combined youth conference in Thailand for the Lao and Thai people, but of course that was before COVID-19. This year we will have two separate youth conferences, one in Vientiane, Laos, and one in Udananthi, Thailand, both on April 13th through the 15th. Please be in prayer for these two conferences. Uh, this is about Bible College. We are very pleased with Kong and his wife, uh, Lily. They have shown tremendous leadership in our absence. We have taken the weight of the ministry on their own. They are overseeing the two villages as well as the Bible College. Thank God that Kong and the students completed the staff house and the girls' dormitory last year, which has been a huge blessing financially. The men's rental dormitory is about 100 yards away. We are thrilled about the growth of these students. And these are about some prayer requests next. Our daughter continues to have health problems. She is scheduled to have yet another biopsy on April 26th at UCLA Medical. Please continue to be in prayer for this. Again, we want to thank you for the progress of the ministry in Southeast Asia. There is so much to do. Thank you for your sacrificial giving and prayers over the years. We would not be able to do what we do without your partnership with you. In Christ, Brother Thong. Amen. All right, folks, you may remain seated. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. You may remain seated and turn into hymn number 216. 216.
folks, go ahead and stand if you would please. One last time, this is going to be our offertory hymn and turned over to 657, Will There Be Any Stars? 657, ushers, please do come on the last verse. I am thinking today of that beautiful land I shall reach when the sun goeth down. With her wonderful grace by my Savior I stand. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, God, for another opportunity to come together and to worship you freely. Thank you, Lord, for our beautiful country and all that you've provided us. I pray, God, this evening that you would bless the offering and that you would provide our need. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> help tonight. Uh, how many of you would be willing to help me if it only cost you about a dollar in about 15 minutes of time? Nobody? Nobody. Show of hands. Who will help me? Cost a dollar in about 15 minutes of time. Your mom and dad will pay the dollar. All I need you to do is, uh, <coughs> I got paper, I got envelopes. Here's the address. Uh, send my son a letter. Well, I don't want to do that. Okay. You want to help that distribute these? Okay, give these, any, 
at the after services, find out, give them a piece of paper and an envelope, and they can write the address, which is right there on the envelope, and it's ready to go. Uh, to put a stamp on it, throw it in the mail. Amen? I've been, I've been doing all kinds of fun things. I've been uh, emailing his drill instructor, senior drill instructor, uh, Sergeant Miranda, and saying, please say hello to my son, my little boy, today. <laughs> I've done it two or three times to him. I don't know what's happening on the other end, but... <laughs> You don't think I did that? I really did. <coughs> but the uh, preacher uh, lost, uh, he, he had a cold, and he, he must have kissed Chad, and Chad must have kissed me, because I think we all got it. <coughs> so uh, I'm going to do my best to get through here tonight. I killed the microphone. <laughs> did it die? Okay, it's back. All right. We're all right. Well, I <laughs> want you to, we've got a couple places we're going to go tonight in Scripture. I'm going to mainly be, uh, Brother, Brother Joe kind of hit me with some of the things in, in uh, John chapter 4. And uh, in a parallel verse there, I think it connects to it in, in Luke chapter 10. So if you have your Bibles, turn to John 4, Luke 10, and, <clears throat> and then we're going to go to Matthew 23. But, so we're going to get open to John 4, Luke 10, and then stick a third finger in Matthew 20, I'm sorry, Matthew 13. And that's the first verse we're going to look at, because that's going to give us an idea. And then Matthew 13, we will leave that um, <clears throat> at point and... Um, it's just going to give me an idea. And so um, get to Matthew 13, 31 is what we're going to go look at first. Okay, does that make sense? Then we're going to jump to John 4 and Luke 10 back and forth, kind of, sort of. So i got two verses. I want you to put them together, kind of. Because what you don't realize is when you look at the Bible, uh, oftentimes different writers, God used them to write differently. And it would be the same as you picking up a red ink pen or a blue ink pen. You can't expect a blue ink pen to write red, amen? And so God used these instruments that he had created to write the way he wished them to write. <clears throat> and uh, so you have a little bit different look and sometimes a feel. You have the, the, the demoniac of Gadara. There's actually two that were demon-possessed, and, and, but only one was used to reach ten cities for Christ. And that's the one that one gospel writes about. The other gospel one writes there's two. So both are correct. Uh, <clears throat> one concentrates on what was done afterwards. One concentrates on the amount that was there. Uh, so this is when you read the Bible, oh, there's contradictions. No, there's complementation. Okay, they complement each other. All right, I've been waiting for <coughs> one of our deacons to get to finally to Matthew 13, 31. So if you're there, we're going to read verse 31. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Oftentimes they say the missionaries are on the field. And that's the thought I want to get tonight as we begin. The field. I want you to think of the field. Uh, <clears throat> we know if you go to the book of Acts, uh, very, very beginning of the book of Acts, you've got to tie Acts chapter 1 with the last chapter of uh, Matthew where, where Jesus says, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore baptized in the name of the Father, Son, you know, baptized of all nations, the name of those connections here connect right to Acts chapter 1, where he talks about the, be, being the promise from on high, and he says, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you in verse 8 of chapter 1 of the book of Acts. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, notice this next verse, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. How, I'm sorry, right every time I cough, it's going to kill me. Can I, I'll maybe I disconnect this rascal. I'm trying to do it. And put it back. Um, so how can we be in two places at once? When I, was having, when I had children at home, they often thought I could do that. And my wife often seems to think I can do that because I seem to think sometimes that she can do that. But we cannot physically be in two places at once in this body. Uh, there may be a day when we can uh, in our glorified body. But the Bible tells us we need to be in more than one place at the same time. And there's no physical way you all in this church tonight can also be on the field of Estonia. So what do you do? You send your representative. But now when you send your representative, i got a question for you. It's the title of my message, Whose Job Is It Anyway? Whose job is it to see those folks in Estonia won the Christ? Is it my job? Any more than it's yours? No. You see, so I tell people all the time, God gave the commission to whom? 
the church. Okay? It's y'all's job to see that that field is one. I'm a worker in your field. And so um, this is the, many people say, oh, Brother Mike's on his field. No, Brother Mike's in our field, the field of Estonia. And that's what we need to get an idea. So whose job is it anyway? You know, sometimes people <clears throat> don't realize that if we all don't do our jobs, nothing gets accomplished. I was thinking of the time during the Soviet Union, you had a particular job to do. When I first went to Russia, <clears throat> I was, they were surprised because I said, man, I need to change my electrical outlet in my house. No big deal. You know, I unscrewed the thing, pulled it out of the wall, it's all concrete wall. You had to learn how to use that. And then I, I changed the outlet. And they go, wow, burn my electrician. And then I needed to change the toilet. So I changed the toilet. And they went, wait a minute. I thought you was an electrician. I said, I didn't think I needed to be to change an outlet. Well, yeah, but you just changed the toilet. I said, yeah, it's like two bolts. I mean, Brother Lee, how many toilets have you changed in your life? You know, it's like one of the simplest things you can do, as long as it's not plugged up when you start. Amen? <clears throat> that makes it a little more exciting. But it's not hard. It's not rocket science. And, and, but they had the concept that if it's, they have a job, Whatever that job is, whether it's Santechnic or the plumber or electric, and a, an electrician would like, I don't even want to know how the toilet works because I don't want to ever think about working on it. And they wouldn't. They'd have to call their buddy, the, the plumber, and he'd be like, oh, man, I don't want to think about the electrical switch. I don't even want to see it. In America, it's like, man, you got a house, fix it. You know, uh, we learn how to do a lot of different things, don't we? They didn't do that. They, didn't, they, were, they were very much one-sided. And so consequently, here's, here's a guy watching these two guys. He's, he's touring Russia for the first time. And he's driving down the road, and he sees these two guys, and one guy's digging a hole. Then he steps forward and starts digging another hole. Pretty soon, a guy comes behind him and starts filling the hole in. He's filling the hole in. And he's looking at these guys. He says, what in the world is going on? He says, gentlemen, what are you doing? He said, we're planting trees. Planting trees? Yeah. Planting trees. You know, Vanya, he digs the hole. Victor, he fills it in. Misha, he puts the trees in the hole. Where's Misha? Oh, he's sick today. Some of you will get it on the way home <laughs> next week. <clears throat> this is the way some people act when it comes to ministry. And really, we, we got a lot of activity, <laughs> but nothing really gets accomplished. When you're in this church, now, you visitors, I apologize. Where's this? Sir, I apologize. Who else? We have a lady back here. I apologize tonight. This is us folks. And you're in on a family meeting. I apologize. And I come walking right here, and I, we're looking for a ladder. So I, man, they said, well, I think there's one out there. Back the back. I go in the back. Yeah, there's five ladders thrown every which way. Whose job is it anyway? What well, ain't my job. Put the ladders away. Why not? How long would it take somebody just to go back out there and stack the ladders and make it look half presentable? It looks like a pig pen. Mm, but it might done gone to meddling now. It got real quiet. You see something, you just fix it. It doesn't take five minutes to stack up the ladders. Why the people that had the five ladders out didn't stack them up when they put them back mm, is beyond me. But everybody else just walks by. You got old junk rotting out here. I mean, do you need the preacher to come drag you by the ear and point it out to you? Do you need the head of the trustees to drag you by the ear and point it out? Come on, folks. Let's work together, amen? amen. Uh, <coughs> whose field is it anyway? So I want us to look at the field tonight. <coughs> We're going now to John chapter 4. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 4. And I hope that my voice makes it too to the end of the time frame. Otherwise, we're going to be a short message tonight. I may only get a point and a half done. Whose water is what? Boy, is any of these cold? I don't know. Oh, that one's been drunk out of? That one's been drunk out of? I don't care. I guess they're all the same anyway. Anyway, oh well. Thank you, Brother Mike. You got lipstick on it, though. Where'd you get the lipstick from? <coughs> anyway, John chapter 4 and verse 35. We saw this last Sunday, which you saw a lot last Sunday if you were here. <laughs> Amen. I'll preach about half that. Uh, you notice what Jesus says here. You, get, we're, we're, you know the scenario if you hear Sunday night. Uh, the disciples go into the, the uh, and Brother Joe said there's only two. I, don't, I disagree. Um, and I'll have to correct his doctrine. I think it was all of them. 
all went in town. They passed a woman coming out, didn't seem to see her, and he's winning her to Christ. They come back out, and they're confused why he's talking to her, you see. And he says, say not ye. There are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. So <clears throat> what's happening here is Jesus is reaping a harvest of souls. And they're busy over here in the physical realm. I'm not going to re-preach Brother Joe's message. Okay? They didn't get the spiritual and the physical. If you just ask, when's harvest time, fellas? They'd say, oh, it's four months from now. Don't say that. There's a harvest that needs to be reaped right now. <clears throat> and I want you to notice that he says this, Behold, I say unto you. Now, if you have a King James Bible, that word you gives you some information that you don't get typically from English. And that information is he's talking to how many? Nope. I would say unto thee, but it was one. But he's saying unto you. He's talking to them. Not one. Them. Lift up your eyes, not thine eye, your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white already in the harvest. He's giving them a challenge. <clears throat> now, you take, try this in over here to uh, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. <clears throat> Luke chapter 10 and verse 2. And it says this. The harvest truly is great. But the laborers are few. The laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Notice the next phrase. We missed this one. Go your ways. So we see, first of all, the steward of the field. God has given the field. This, this, this field is not just Estonia. This field is not just Oceanside or Vista, or Carlsbad, or North County, or San Diego County, or California, or the United States. You see, the field is global. And we each are having a part in this field. When we look at, and again, tie it back to Acts, he says, you're going to be witnesses that I mean in Jerusalem, and Judea, and Samaria, and unto the uttermost. Okay, even the dairy farms, the uttermost. Some of you will get that next week. All right. <clears throat> I'm trying my best, Brother Dave. I'm trying. I'm really trying. We've got to understand God has given the responsibility to us. Most people don't realize there's a purpose for you after you're saved. You see? Right here, right now, the only purpose that you have on this earth is to bring others to Christ. Because if it was to grow in grace, if it was to learn knowledge, those are all good things. We need those. Amen. We do need those. I'm not saying we don't. We need those so that we can win souls. Um, we need to learn. We need education. We need knowledge. We need to be encouraged. We need to be exhorted. We need to be convicted. We need good heart preaching sometimes. We need to encourage you preaching sometimes. But that's all to help us be grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because as we get more knowledge of Christ, we want to give Christ to others. We have the stewardship of the field. <clears throat> Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers. Uh, he says, say unto ye that four months and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes. You, 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 you. The stewardship of the field is ours. Notice secondly, the servant in the field. That's the laborers. That's the laborers, the servant in the field. Again, we go back to, to we're going back and forth here, back and forth, back and forth. <coughs> we see here in, in Luke chapter 10, he says that labors are few. We don't see a lot of workers in the field. Now, again, where's our field? Okay. I, I like what you were talking about, uh, <coughs> about discipleship. Let me give you help. Find somebody and pray. And then go to them. How, uh, how many, no, don't, don't be embarrassed. It's okay. How many have never discipled somebody? Anybody? Come on, it's okay. Just, just admit it. You're, if you admit it, you're safe. Okay? Amen? 
Because if you've already done it, why aren't you doing it now is my next question, all right? So if you've never done it before, say, I've just never done it yet. It's okay. Raise your hands. Guys, come on. Get them up. There. Okay. You've never discipled anybody. That's okay. So you've never done it before. That's kind of a, ah, man, I don't know. It's as easy. You get the discipleship materials. You find somebody you think is not saved, for example. And what you do, you go to them, and you have them do you a favor. By you doing them a favor. Say, could you help me out? I would really like to be able to teach this, but I don't know how. Could you help me teach this? Could you be like, like a student and kind of give me the perspective and help critique me on how I'm doing teaching this? That's kind of sneaky, Brother Mike. Well, it works. I remember the first guy I ever um, um, discipled here. I was only about 19 at the time, 20 maybe, and I didn't know anything about discipling. <clears throat> I didn't know anything. Nothing. Probably nothing. We had a man come down and get saved in the church. And I got talking to him. I, Lord, let my heart take him out to eat after church. So I said, hey, Jim, you want to go out to eat after church? He goes, he was, he's a, he was a drunk. He was a, a brawler. He would go down on Friday nights just to get in a fight in a bar. He was a, he was a mean guy, a nice, sweet guy once he got saved. And I said, would well, you want to go out to eat? And he says, uh, okay. And then I began to talk to him. He said something. I said, well, get you a concordance. He goes, what's that? And so I went and brought him a concordance, brought it over to his house. He says, how do you use it? It just was like he was helping me learn how to disciple. And I began to spend three nights a week with him, two or three hours a night, learned teaching him, teaching him. I didn't think I knew enough. But I knew what a concordance was. I knew more than he did, I realized. You see, uh, a lot of people come to the mission field. I say, don't be, you go to the mission field, the typical mission field is they know in nothing. I know that's not good English. They know nothing. They don't know nothing. That's the word I want to say. So the average Baptist has more Bible knowledge and enough Bible knowledge to be a help because they don't know nothing. Again, that's not good English, but you get the point. The servants on the field, we are, we are lacking. We are lacking. Why? Why is there a lack of servants? The Bible tells us, hmm, harvest truly is great, laborers are few. Pray ye, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers in his harvest. I've asked you already to do me a favor. It'll only take you about 15 minutes. Right? It don't have to be elaborate. It don't, you know, just, it don't have to be real big. Send a picture. Okay? Hey, this is me. Hi. <laughs> done. Five minutes. Man, I got to tell Brother Mike 15, nothing. I got it done. Five. Okay, put a stamp on it. Okay? Dollar. That's it. The other thing you can do, pray. Oh, Brother Smith, we hear this all the time. Here's my specific prayer request. We need laborers on the field. Specifically, I need a young couple. What's their qualifications? Heart right with God. Quite honestly. If they really want to know, if they want to serve, and they have loyalty, I, we can teach them everything they need to know. Honestly. We need somebody surrendered with the heart right with God. We need a young couple. Would you pray, pray for that specifically? For a young couple that could come alongside. <coughs> we go sometimes an entire year without a single person getting saved. Now, contrast that with Russia, where we were there five years, we had at least one person saved, baptized, and added to the church every month. Saved, baptized, added to the church. And them folks, I'm being tongue-in-cheek, were so dumb. They didn't know, Brother Travis, that you're not supposed to come to church only about 40% on Wednesday nights. You see, so we had, we had Sunday morning church, then we had Sunday school, then we had a break for lunch, and then we had youth service, and then we had evening service, and everybody came. We had 99% coming back on Wednesday night. And I had more than one church I was preaching at. So I had Wednesday night one church, Thursday night another church. I had, I mean, we were all over the place preaching three to four times a week. And we, everybody came. 
because they didn't have enough brains. They didn't know. You mean we're not supposed to all be there? Oh. I mean, I'm, I'm being facetious. Praise the Lord. They had a heart for the Lord, and they were there. This is why we saw things done that we saw done. It was a blessing to see those people get so hungry for God's word that he would come. Now, not, you, you, <clears throat> we didn't have these nice things you're sitting in. We had a, a wooden plank, okay, 20 centimeters wide, and it was warped, okay, <laughs> warped, and it had nothing on it, no back, and we got a back massage because we, we made these fit in there where when you, we loaded the first ones first in the back, went all the way across the room, the next ones went, and when they would back in there, we backed them in so tight that you got a neck, you got a back massage from the knees of the guy behind you. I am not joking. And uh, we had enough room between the benches that you could kind of slide between. And we had a bed, a, 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 what do you call those, little stools. And we fit right in between there. So it was completely solid. And once you got in, you couldn't get out. Okay. And I would be backed into the corner, <coughs> the pulpit. I'd be back, call it completely in the corner. And we'd come all the way around. We would then fill up the highway. Uh, we could fit 58 people in there. If the kids, we would say sometimes, guys, sorry, we've got no room for you. Then I'd go play, in a, go play in the streets. And they would go outside, 55 below zero, and they're out there playing outside because we can't fit them in the building until God allowed us to buy a building. And uh, these people came back on Wednesday night. It was a blessing. The average church member here today could have been feeding them because these people knew nothing about the Lord. These people had never heard a hymn. Not one. <clears throat> we need servants in the field. Now I want you to notice the state of the field. To do that, we go back to Luke. I'm sorry. Let's go back to John chapter 4, verse 35. We've already read it. What did it say there? Guys, open your eyes. Amen? That's what he said. Not in so many words. He said what? About the fields. Lift up your eyes. And look on the fields, for they're white already on the harvest. How many of you in here have ever been on a farm and you have harvested either wheat, oats, or rye? Hold on. You've got to be kidding me. You've, you've done this. Okay. Wow. Man, I used to do this. That was one of my jobs uh, was baling hay, baling straw. And... <clears throat> wheat gets, starts to get really bright yellow when it starts getting ready. And it's kind of glossy. And if you don't harvest it, then, oh, man, if there's a rainstorm comes down, it peels the glossiness of yellow off of the husks and off of the straw and makes it real kind of rough. And it knocks the grain out of the corn and you lose your grain. This is the state of this field here. It's white. It's, it's overdone. It's, it's been past harvest time. <clears throat> With that being said, as we talk about the state of the field, I thought I would wake a few of you up. I see some people. I, one poor fellow about got himself knocked out. He was fell asleep and about hit his head on the pew. So we're going to talk about Little Stoney tonight. This is total, <clears throat> totally off this topic just for fun. Can we do that? Preacher's not here. When the mount cats away, the mice play. Amen? So, <clears throat> according, this is all facts about Estonia. That's all this is. It's kind of boring for some of you. Uh, but according to the largest study of height of people around the world, Estonian men and women are the third tallest on earth. It's not unusual for me to get on a bus and there's a woman next to me. First thing I do is look down. What shoes does she have on? Oh my, she's wearing flats. I look back up to her. Mrs. Mary, you wouldn't want to be there. I'm telling you, these, these are some big people. Big people. Men and women. Oftentimes the women are, are taller than I am. Uh, Estonia has the highest number of supermodels per capita in the entire world. So beautiful are the Estonian women that in the movie American Beauty, they had a half Estonian to play the American. Isn't that sad? <coughs> Um, Americans, uh, Estonians are the world champions 
in the international sport and in the Guinness Book of World Records for the wonderful sport of wife carrying. That was that picture I had on my, uh, my thing. That was wife carrying. And the women, women participate. I mean, they're, it's, they're hooked on. And they're dragged their heads under water sometimes. And, and their job is to hold on while the man does all the other work. It's a team sport, let me tell you. Uh, they invented another sport called kicking. Kicking. Caleb's done that, I think, haven't you? With a <laughs> He's a swing, and it's got a metal rods instead of, of chains or ropes. And the idea is to get it to go 360 degrees. And the way you win is the longer you can make the spokes go. And, of course, you get this thing going. And you can only imagine uh, if you've eaten anything beforehand. Uh, we have Margus Hunt, or Margaret Hunt in the English. He's an Estonian that plays in the National Football League. Um, he's six foot eight. Okay, give you an idea of how big Estonians are. Uh, <coughs> Encino Man was a movie. I don't know anything about it, but they used the idea of Encino because it sounded like Estonia because they thought Estonian sounded in Stone Age. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> but Estonia is one of the most, is seventh most digital city, Tallinn, seventh most digital city in the world. The only place in the United States that even matches it is the Silicon Valley. Estonia is so close to the Arctic Circle, we have days of like, just like four hours long. In the summertime, it seems like we have sun year, night, all through the night. Uh, at, at midnight or 1 o'clock, it gets below the horizon, but there's still enough light to read in the summertime. In the wintertime, it's just dark all the time. Yeah, I was, I've been in Estonia when it snowed in June. Uh, <coughs> everything is done online. You can vote online. <laughs> kind of like getting a mail-in ballot in the United States, uh, except they actually check you in Estonia. Um, you can do all kinds of things. Your taxes are done online, all this stuff. Um, we have been permanently invaded since the 1200s. Somebody's always trying to invade Estonia, so people are like, aren't you worried about Russia? It's like, come on, we've been doing this for 800 years. So <clears throat> we'll get kind of used to it. Estonians had the right to vote for women um, years before the United States. Um, we have the longest paid parental leave of 435 days for women. When you have a baby, you get 435 days days parental leave paid if you have another baby you can keep on going okay <clears throat> we're a space nation first food ever consumed in outer space was made in estonia of course sauna is a big part of our culture you buy an apartment rent an apartment it'll have a sauna in it my house has a sauna and an indoor pool which i don't fill because i don't have the money but anyway i got a pool uh, arvo arvo pert is an Estonian. He is the world's most performed living composer. Didn't know that guy, did you? Ah, you got to check him out. Uh, Pert, which means duck. Um, <coughs> Estonian language is one of the hardest to learn for a native English speaker. Unfortunately, Korean is actually harder, so Joe wins that one. Uh, <coughs> out of 200 countries, Estonia ranks number two in adult literacy uh, because North Korea claims 100%. North Korea. Estonians are the most enterprising people in the world. World Economic Forum of 2017 ranked Estonia number one in entrepreneurial activity. Um, we have Skype, Playtech, TransferWise, Bolt, Cleveron, all this stuff going on. Uh, you've seen it. You've used it. You've been familiar with it. Some of the technology coming from Estonia, and you don't even know it. <coughs> we are third largest manufacturer of symbols in the world. Um, da, 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 da. We played the first underwater checkers tournament. It was in Estonia. The biggest collection of folk songs in the world, 133,000 songs. Fifth place in the world in opera. Uh, first animated 3D film was in Estonia. Things that were invented in Estonia, rubber gloves for uh, surgeons, orthopedic orth cast material. You know, all you people that in the old days had the plaster casts, they don't have that. They have like that fiber thing going on now. That was from Estonia. Uh, that was invented there. Gibson, uh, we're the number one in education for children. Number one in the world, we're ranked number three in academic performance. However, the two countries that are placed above have, a, have a, an exorbitant high suicide rate. Estonia has almost a zero teenage suicide rate, so we consider us to have the best schools in the entire world. Um, we have the oldest pharmacy in the world, been operating since the 1400s, continually at one location, 1422, 70 years before Columbus sailed the ocean blue. <coughs> we have the oldest city hall, uh, 1411. It's been in 
operation since 1411, our city hall. We have the highest building in the world from 1549 to 1625. And for Scott, we have <coughs> Estonian capital of Tallinn was home of the first publicly displayed Christmas tree in 1441. So that's interesting. Uh, we had every year at um, uh, to enjoy the Christmas, which is December 24th every year, they have a big presentation there at the town hall. Remember that old town hall? Been in since 1411. They come there, the mayor of the city. When we first got there, he came, he opened up the windows. They had a live uh, brass orchestra playing uh, music, absolutely gorgeous. And he gets up, the mayor of Tallinn, understand Estonia, the second strongest atheistic country in the world. At that time, it was number one atheistic country in the world and the strongest anti-religious country in the world. At that time, 94% of all Estonians, 94%, claimed no religious affiliation. And they get up there and read the birth story of Christ from the Gospel of Luke. I was like, no connection. Um, we are the last bastion of paganism in Europe, yep, um, they consume more beer than about any other country in the world per capita. We have over 20, about 2,100 different beers brewed in the country. Okay, uh, <laughs> Ed Odin, you ever heard of Odin? He's supposedly buried in Estonia. <coughs> the first re modern refracting telescope was the largest and best of its kind was made in Estonia. We have the highest number of blue-eyed individuals with 89% of the population are blue-eyed in Estonia. And we are the top 10 most cultured city by the Boston-based Wanderoo, whatever that is, I don't know. But Wanderoo, some of you might know. That gives you a little idea of the field for us, what we deal with. We're dealing with people <coughs> that when you talk to them about the gospel, they say, where do you get your information? What would you tell them from the Bible. And they said, why would, I, why would I believe that? You ever had that question asked to you? What do you answer? My answer was, uh, I'll get back to you. <laughs> I had no idea how to deal with somebody who didn't accept the Bible as God's word. Most people, when I grew up, even if they were uh, heathen, like Brother Dave, they still respected the Bible. They had a respect for it, even if they weren't going to church. I had a respect for the Bible when I wasn't going to church. If you just said, hey, you take this, this Bible right here and burn it. No, I ain't doing that. Amen? You with me? They're like, well, who cares? So our first six months of teaching and preaching was solely to bring them around to the point where they could look at the Word of God and say, hmm, it has something here. And what I kept saying was, I would always repeat it, it's a supernatural book given by a supernatural being. And what we did is, <clears throat> I kept asking the question, how could anybody write something they could not and did not know? That was a question I'd per, I would give them. How can anybody write something they could not and did not know? If Brother Joe had stayed around, I guarantee you he could have taught all of you to write Korean. How many has ever seen Korean? Okay, it's not hard, is it? You can read Korean in about, I could teach you to read Korean in 15 minutes. How many, are you, how many know what I'm talking about? It's not hard at all. You don't understand a word you're reading, but you can read it. You know, ong, ong, ha, si, all. Okay, I don't know what that means, but that's what it says. Okay? <clears throat> that's Korean. Koreans, you can read it. I can teach you to read it. And I can teach you to write it in about 15 minutes. I don't even know how to speak Korean. But in 15 minutes, you can learn to read and write it. But you don't have a clue what you're reading and writing. How can anybody write that which he does not know? Anybody have an answer? Somebody who does know tells them what to write. Boy, you talk about proving the inspiration of Scripture, and it's all through the Bible. 
There's so many things that the writers of these things that they wrote could not have known. How? How? Tell me how. Job knew that the earth was at the top, was north. How? He couldn't have known. He didn't know. God told him. What do you mean, Brother Smith? Every globe I've ever seen spins around north at the top. That's right. But every map, until modern times, if you had a map, and it's in the Bible, by the way, give you a hint what's at the top. Because he says, as I look, I see Egypt on my right and Lebanon on my left. Which direction was he facing? East. What do we call the east? It's the Orient. Hmm, Orient. What do we call it the Orient? Because it was the way you oriented your maps to the east. Whoop. Not to the whoop north. Because they didn't realize north was at the top. We know now. We got a globe. <laughs> How in the world did Job have a clue? That north was at the top. And how didn't Job know that Atlas wasn't carrying that right thing around? Amen? Or, or had a, tur a lot of turtles back. Or all the other absurd things. Because they realized, we're just got to be held on something. And God said, I'll tell you what it's held on. Job, tell him. I don't know either. Tell him it's held on nothing. All right. It's held on nothing. That's what God said. Tell, told Job. Job wrote it down. Job didn't know. Job just knew what God knew, and God told him to write it down. And the best one I always saved till the end of my six months was the book of Daniel. Man, who Daniel's in here. He's writing these things down. He said, I wrote them down. I had no idea what I was writing. I had no understanding. So I began to pray, oh, God, help me understand. Oh, God, help me understand. And there's a battle going on in heaven because here comes the angel to explain it to him. And that angel withstands him. And Michael, the angel, stands up and whoops that other angel, sends him on his way, sends Junior one on his way. And he appears before Daniel. As soon as you start praying, I was dispatched. And there was a big battle. He tells them all that happened. Now I'm here to help you understand. And the Bible says, <laughs> that Daniel listened. Uh-huh, <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You ever do this with your kids? Okay? Now, you listen to them. No, 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 no. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you understand? No, sir. Okay? You, you, Travis, you with me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's Daniel. Okay, 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 okay. You got that? The angel explained it. Bible says he wrote it. I understood nothing. But he wrote it. He wrote it. I said, how? And by the way, you study the, the prophecies of Daniel and how they came true. Wow. Glory to God. I said, not only did he write it and not know what he was writing, but it came true. And I said, that's the state on the field, folks. There are people that have no idea what the Bible is. You can't just give them Bible. And every Bible study I ever went to said, the Bible's true. How do we know? Because it says so. That's right. Really? You need to believe this Bible. Why? Because I said so. Really? That's pretty pitiful. So I had to spend months, and I, I didn't have anybody else's Bible. I mean, they may have something out now, but 20 years ago, I had no idea how to prove them that the Bible was true outside of the Bible. Extra biblical sources. Brother Mike, you mean you didn't teach Bible? Well, I did, but I had to be very careful how I got it in there. Right. Okay. <clears throat> That's the state of the field, folks. It's white already on the harvest. I remember going to a village called Usposhresk in Russia. <clears throat> As we're leaving the village, now again, I'm going to tell you what a what a what a what a war, prayer war, what a what a faith warrior, what a what a mighty warrior of, of God I am. I'll tell you how powerful and strong and we're leaving the village, we're in a bus that we'd rented. Here comes this woman out of the apartment complex, she comes running, and she's splashing in the mud puddles, and I see her coming and I going, hurry, hurry, hurry. This old woman's chasing us. That shows you my manliness here. <coughs> 
I didn't want that old woman to catch us because I'd seen she's on fire. Oh, man, we must have made her mad. I don't know what, what we made her mad doing, but maybe she got some of the literature we passed out. Now she's going to kill us all. Okay, tell you how manly I was. This old woman. Rah! She's yelling at us. Get going! Okay? And she goes running. And she, the bus is going slow because the colleagues not holding on. Come on. And I'm thinking, she's going to get in this bus and kill us all. You ain't never been terrified to you had no babushka chase you down. <clears throat> She started beating on the door. I didn't speak Russian. I had no idea what she was saying. I thought, man, she's curse, cursing us all kinds of curses. I had no idea. She's saying, stop, 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 stop. Help, 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 help. I was just terrified. I was like, get it out of here. Big prayer warrior, big mighty man here. <clears throat> we stopped. The interpreter comes out and says, what's going on? What does she want? She started crying. She held up the pamphlet we'd given her, the John Romans. She says, do you have anything more? As tears are falling down her face, she goes, this village is without a single copy of God's word. Not one. The priest in the Russian Orthodox chapel down the road will not allow us to have Bible in the village. Is there any way you can give me more? Went <clears throat> just down the road, we went to another place, and there's a lady named Anna, I'll never forget her. When I gave her a John Romans, she she tried to kind of kind of didn't want to touch it. She goes, For me? I said, Yeah. I, <clears throat> again, I'm just learning Russian. I didn't know any Russian. And there's a word called Besplatna. Besplatna. And it, it, it means without pay. Okay, and <clears throat> the only way I remembered it, it kind of sounded like plata in Spanish, which was what? Nobody knows Spanish. Huh? What's plata? Silver. Right. So without silver. That's the only way I remember this plata in Russian. Without silver, no pay. Okay, I got it. And so <clears throat> I'm trying to get her to understand, this is free. It's for you. She was like, oh, this is from the Bible. I said, yeah, yeah. John Romans, for you. And, I, and finally she says, it's platna. And I said, ah, that word plata, Spanish for silver. And I knew bez meant without. I got that word. Bez platna, she said. Si, si, I said. It's the only foreign language I knew at the time. <coughs> and she said, oh. And she grabbed it. She started hugging it like this, just a copy of John Romans. As a tear streamed down her face. She said, said, I've never seen any part of the Bible in print. That's the condition of the field, folks. And what's the solution? We have the steward, that's us. The servant. We have the state. We have the solution. The solution's simple. Pray and go. Pray and go. We need help. We need help. I want to say this as we close. I have never been as inundated with an outreach from this church as I have this trip. You folks have just reached out to us in so many ways. This is the first time, the first time I'm returning to the field with more money than I came with. First time. Because it costs a lot to get here. And you guys took care of me. You guys have blessed us. Oh, thank you. We've had so many opportunities to go out to eat, we couldn't fit them all in. And I missed out for Tony's carne asadas. If anybody knows me and Mexican food, you know what a sacrifice that was. Just couldn't fit him in the schedule. Man. So I just want to tell you, you're taking took good care of us. I thank you. But would you pray for us? A young people, young couple, or two, or three, or four. I'm not limited to one. Amen. You give me four or five young couples, I can pick a good one. Seriously, folks, we need to pray. That's God's plan A. He doesn't have plan B. Amen? Or Scott, would you come up here and close the service, please?
Brother Michael come with a little brief invitation, and then uh, uh, after the invitation, we'll break up for prayer. On the third verse, 562. Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without, O Lamb of God, I come. I come. As I am for wretched life, sight rich is healing of the mind. Hey, all I need in thee to find the land of God, I come, I come just as. Oh. Uh-huh. 